And then as we get ready for 4th of July fireworks, astronomers all over the world are anxiously awaiting a much different kind of explosion in the sky. Brian Hackney breaks down a once in a lifetime recurring nova. It's expected sometime this summer. This is the story of one star in Corona Borealis. And another one at Chabot College in Hayward. It's high enough so you can see the curve of the Earth, right? You can actually see Earth curves. Astronomer Scott Hildreth. So today is the last day here at Chabot for me after 35 years of teaching, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful ride. It's one last time to get together with his students. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And one last chance to show off his talent for explaining a soon-to-appear ultra-rare recurrent nova. You're right that they do not occur often, that they're very rare. There are only about 10 or 12 in the entire Milky Way galaxy. This drama is playing out 2,500 light years from Earth this summer at a binary star system in a constellation called Corona Borealis. Whereas our solar system has only one sun, this one has the so-called blaze star, a binary, two solar masses, one a dead white dwarf, locked in orbit with an expanding red giant which gets bigger and bigger at the end of its life it swells outwards it's 75 times bigger than our own sun and now some of its material falls onto its companion that's what triggers the nova when it does it'll blaze into life adding a temporary new star to the nighttime sky. Part of the fun of this is going outside and making an attempt to looking at it and seeing it and being ready to capture it. Are you gonna to try to take a picture of this? Yes. The big question is, when? Across Silicon Valley, astronomer Jeff Matthews says clues have already appeared and he's amped up. A recurring nova. Oh my goodness, these are one of my favorite things. Recurring because it blazes into life about every 80 years and it's due. But the star system seems to dim just before it flares. And in the last year... Oh, we've had that dip in brightness. We can now anticipate sometime in the next couple of years it's going to go boom. It's like a hydrogen bomb going off across the entire surface of this white dwarf all at once. When it does, a new star will wink on in the nighttime sky in Corona Borealis, roughly between super bright Vega and Arcturus. All because one distant star is on full. It's this one throwing lighter fuel onto a tiny little hot piece of coal. And when enough fuel falls onto it and it heats up enough, it flashes. And that's the flash that creates the nova. You know, Scott, you should teach. <laughs> of course, Scott yeah. has been teaching at Chabot since 1989. And I think it's up to about 10,000 students in my career. Um, I would borrow from Lou Gehrig and say, I consider myself one of the luckiest men on the face of the earth. When the star does go nova, it will shine on for maybe just a week in the nighttime sky. Scott's influence, though, that'll go on for a lifetime. Uh, by the way, don't call this a supernova. That is a completely different phenomenon referring to the explosive death of a star.